What up, Buttercup? This is Caleb Jones, and this is the Alpha Male 2.0 Podcast. Today, we're going to talk business. I was going through my list of podcasts, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm not talking about business very often. I'm talking about good stuff, about, you know, five flags and women and lifestyle and being a guy and Alpha 2.0 concepts, but I'm not talking about business. I got to talk about business, business, business. So I am going to give you one of the single most important business techniques the single most important business concepts critical to Alpha 2.0 in terms of having an Alpha 2.0 business. And that is the number one reason why small entrepreneurs stay small. So let me clarify that before I get into it. I am not talking about the number one reason why a brand new business owner who starts a new company never makes any money. That's a different reason. Talk about the, you know, the reason why a guy who starts his business and he never gets to the alpha 2.0 minimum income of $75,000 a year, that's in US dollars pre-tax, why he never attains that level of income. He just, you know, makes 500 bucks or a thousand bucks and just stops or never makes any money and gets distracted or his wife gets mad at him or he gets tired or bored or whatever the fuck, or he tries to do a new business or whatever. There's so many reasons why guys never get their businesses off the ground. The vast majority of these reasons are because of emotions and or laziness and or oneitis, almost always. They're rarely are they business reasons, they're emotional reasons. So maybe we could talk about that in some other podcast at some point. What I'm talking about today in this podcast is why the business owner who does make some money, maybe he makes 50000 a year, a small, small business owner, one man, or close to it type business where he makes 50,000 a year, you know, maybe online he makes 50,000 a year income or he makes the alpha male 2.0 minimum of 75,000 a year. Location independent or not is kind of irrelevant for this discussion. Hopefully it is location independent. If it's not location independent, it is not alpha 2.0 compatible. Or maybe he makes 100,000 a year or 120,000 a year, you know, something like that. You know, he makes an income, but not a big income because he has a small business and it stays small. Why is it that so many entrepreneurs, I know a lot of these guys, I've been a business consultant for almost 25 years now, a quarter of a century. And I work with literally hundreds of companies. I work with Fortune 500 companies. I work with small mom and pop operations. I've worked with nonprofits. I've worked with startups. I worked with medium sized companies, small companies, big giant corporations, you name it, I've worked with it. And I have seen a lot of entrepreneurs who are making between, oh, I don't know, let's say between 50,000 and 120,000 a year or so, and they never make much more than that. So you'll see these guys making that money and maybe he's making 80,000 a year and you'll you'll meet up with him 12 years later and he's still making about 80,000 a year. He still has his own business, which is impressive. That's good. Uh, if you have a small business that lasts longer than three or four years, you've beat the statistical odds. So I have respect for you. That's great. But they're not making any more money. Um, whereas if you compare that to me, I am making more than 10 X what I used to make, you know, several years ago, I am making a lot more money. Matter of fact, it's, you can't even compare the money I'm making now to the money I was making just five, six years ago. And five, six years ago, I was making a hell of a lot more money than I was five, six years prior to that. So why is that? What is the reason why some entrepreneurs stay small and some entrepreneurs go fucking crazy and hit the big, big money, hit the big dollars and the big income. What is the reason for that disparity? Uh, there's only one reason. And a lot of people will say, well, there's a lot, well, there's a lot of possible reasons, Caleb. It could be this. It could be that. Maybe it could be this. Maybe it could be that. No, wrong, 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 wrong. In my experience, and I have a lot of it working with business owners, there's only one reason. And the reason is, here it is, the emotional unwillingness to outsource. Let me explain that. Explain what that means. Emotional unwillingness to outsource means that as a business owner, you don't mind outsourcing those things that you dislike, that you hate and you find irritating. So maybe you hate bookkeeping. So you have no problem hiring a bookkeeper. That's fine. You have no problem with that whatsoever, or at least minimal problem with that emotionally. Maybe you hate checking your email. So maybe you finally get the balls to outsource your email like I did several years ago. 
Maybe uh, you're not a technical person and you hate working on you know technical problems with your website, so you outsource that. Uh, that's usually not the case. <laughs> Most modern day entrepreneurs, certainly in the Alpha 2.0 world, tend to be more technical, nerdy type guys who like doing technical work. So one of the problems is they focus all this time and effort building their goddamn websites when they should be marketing their companies. But I've mentioned that before. So in other words, maybe you're cool with outsourcing a few things that you don't consider valuable and that you don't consider important and that you don't like. But there's a bunch of things that you never, ever, ever will outsource that you need to in order to get to the big money. And they'll never do it. I've worked with so many entrepreneurs, both Alpha 2.0 location independent entrepreneurs and normal brick and mortar entrepreneurs who absolutely fucking refuse to outsource certain things these guys do every day where if they outsource these things, they could double, triple, quadruple, 5X, maybe even in some cases 10X their incomes. But they won't do these things because they're emotionally uncomfortable. I just got an email that I answered in my email newsletter about a guy saying, hey, I have a YouTube channel and uh, I've built it up and I make a decent, you know, 70, 000, I make about 75,000 a year. So he's in this category I'm talking about. But the problem is uh, I want to start a second business, but I can't. You know, I, I, I do my own video editing, but I am never going to outsource my video editing because there's no way another video editor can understand my vision. And I wanted to fucking throw up. I wanted to throw up all over my screen because he's wrong. Are you fucking kidding me? You don't want to hire someone to edit your fucking videos because of your vision? Wrong. What you do is you want the big money. And maybe this guy doesn't want the big money, but he, but he was asking these questions because he wanted a second business because he wanted to increase his income. If you want the big money, you would hire a video editor and you would work with that person and train him on your parameters and your quote unquote vision. Would that be a pain in the ass? Yes. Could he get it wrong? Yes. Is it possible he turns out to be an idiot? You have to fire him and replace him with someone else? Yes, I'll cover that in a minute. All true. Outsourcing is not fun when you do it the first time. Believe me, it's not. Training people to do things is a nightmare. Making SOPs, operations manuals is a nightmare. You'll fucking hate it. I hate it. I've talked about this in my book, Big Income from Little Work, in terms of how to, how to create a location-independent Alpha 2.0 business. I've talked about that in my Alpha 2.0 business course. Outsourcing is a necessary function of Alpha 2.0, but it sucks when you first start doing it. Yes, 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 it doesn't matter. You have to do it to get to the point where you're making the big money and working less than 30 hours a week, which by the way, is one of the Alpha 2.0 business requirements. That means you make $75,000 a year, location independent or more, but your business only requires you at that income level to work 30 hours a week or less to maintain that income. If you make a lot of money, if you make 500,000 a year, but you gotta work 60 hours a week, you are not free. I've talked about that many, many times before. I know a lot of guys like that, they're fucking pathetic. I know guys make seven figure incomes, million dollars plus a year, as in, but they have to work 60, 70 hours a week. They have to do it, they have to. Why? Because they won't fucking outsource, or in worst case scenarios, they have a goddamn corporate job. Uh, that's, <laughs> talk about sweet hell, holy shit. But the problem is, these entrepreneurs have these four, five, six things that they refuse to outsource. They have to do it themselves. They will never, never, ever outsource anything because no, 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 only I can do it right. No other human being on earth could possibly do what I'm doing. Only I can do it. That means that you are a slave. If that's your attitude about your business, you don't own your business, your business owns you. If your attitude is, no, 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 there's these four or five, six super time-consuming things that only I can do, that no one else can ever do, that I can never outsource. That means your business owns you and you are a goddamn slave. Now, are you as much of a slave as a corporate employee? No, that's even worse of a slave. So you're a higher quality slave. Yes, you're a slave that, you know, if you ever saw the, the TV show Rome, right? You had the, the slaves who were slave in the streets and in the dirt. You have those kinds of slaves, but then you have like the house slaves who dress a little nicer and they wear a little jewelry and things like that. And their owners kind of dress them up and shit like that, but they're still slaves. That's what you are. You're a fancy slave. That's who you are. And you're never, ever, 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 ever going to make the big money ever. Now, if you tell me, Caleb, I don't care. I don't want to make the big money. I am perfectly happy making $75,000 a year or around that for the rest of my life. That's fine with me. As long as you make at least 75,000, that is an alpha 2.0 minimum. That's fine. A lot of guys really don't want to make more money than that. And they're reasonably happy not making that kind of income. That's perfectly cool with me. 
Uh, I'm not in that category, but if that's you, that's great. You don't have to listen to the rest of this podcast. You can just work your ass off and never outsource and make your 75,000 a year for the rest of your life. Uh, and that's fine. I hope you are debt free. I hope you're putting a lot of money away in investments. That's very important, but fine with me. Cool. But if you want to make more than this, if this is what you want, if you want to make more than 75,000 a year, more than 100,000 a year, if you want to make more, you're going to have to outsource things that right now you are emotionally uncomfortable with. You're going to have to get over that emotional hump. You're going to have to. Let me say that again. You're going to have to. Can you imagine Steve Jobs at Apple saying, no, 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 no. I have to personally work on the computers with the screwdrivers and the soldering iron because no one can do it as good as me. No, that'd be insane, right? And I realize that might be a huge leap in terms of a comparison, but you get my fucking point. Uh, I've mentioned this before. In 2019, summer 2019, I made the decision to scale my income, to really scale up my companies. And in six months, uh, let's see, yeah, six to seven, eight months, I went from four people in my company, not including me, to 17 people in my company, not including me. And there's no way in hell I could have done that if I was uncomfortable outsourcing things. Now, let me give you an important point. Was I uncomfortable outsourcing certain things? Yes. Yes, I was extremely uncomfortable. When I outsourced my email, I was extremely uncomfortable emotionally. I hated it. But guess what? <laughs> the amount of time I spent on my email as compared to back then before I outsourced it, it went from 100% to 10%. Uh, now it's down about 5%. I spent about 5% of my time that I used to spend checking my fucking email because I've outsourced it. It's great. So was that a good investment? Are you kidding? That freed up time went to go into what I call IW, improvement work, work that actually improves my income. And my income has gone way, way up last few years, way up, more than I planned on it going. So it was worth it. I have outsourced just about everything you can fucking think of. I have outsourced managing my staff. I don't even manage my staff. Someone else manages the staff. I don't even hire people. Someone else hires people. That's right. I don't even hire my own staff. My chief of staff, the ginger ninja, she hires everyone for me. She onboards everybody. She does all that for me. I mean, I have a say in it. I have final approval, but I just go, okay, yeah, that person looks good because she interviews them all and just takes care of that for me. I outsourced actually my staff. All of my technical functions are outsourced. All of my video editing, all of my podcast and audio editing, all the editing for all the courses I do, that's all outsourced. Writing my blog articles. I don't write my blog articles anymore. Those are transcriptions that are written by a guy who transcribes them off of a YouTube video. I don't even write my blog anymore. I mean, do you think my blog was important to my Alpha 2.0 company? Are you fucking kidding? That's the backbone. I outsourced my entire blog. Are you insane? Now, again, most people would never do this. Most entrepreneurs making, you know, 75 that would never outsource. Well, this is my, this is my vision and this is my pride and joy. And this is my blog and this is my content. And I can, sorry, if you want the big money, you got to outsource. There's an old saying, old Portuguese saying, you can be right or you can be paid. Which one do you want? Now, if you want to be right, you can stamp your little foot and say, I'm never outsourcing these things because I'm the perfect person and no one else can do it as good as me. And I'll just stay at 75,000 a year or 92,000 a year or 101,000 a year or God forbid, 52,000 a year for the rest of my fucking life and I'll never make the big money. Mine, you can be right, but you'll get paid. Or you can be wrong, quote unquote, outsource this shit and get to the big, big, big money. I know it's choice I've chosen. <laughs> no brainer for me. Fucking hell, I'll outsource it. Was it uncomfortable? Yes. Is it uncomfortable? Yes. Matter of fact, I am now outsourcing, as of this podcast, I am outsourcing lots of sales functions, something I've never done before. Marketing functions. Actually, not marketing. I've outsourced that a lot. But I'm, I'm now outsourcing actual sales functions, something I've never done in my life. Am I totally comfortable with that? No, I'm a little uncomfortable with it. But you know what? I like a lot of money. So I'll just suck it up and do it. That's what being a man is all about. Fucking suck it up and get the results that you want. Now, let's cover the aspects of outsourcing and let's cover some of the objections. Well, Caleb, the problem is I got to train someone. Yes, you'll have to fucking train someone. And as I talk about in my business content, you need to create SOPs, standard operating procedures. You need to document every step of a procedure that is done in your company more than once on a regular basis. So anytime something is done in your company, whether you do it or one of your staff does it, you have to ask yourself, will we ever do this again? The answer is yes. 
you've got to write, you or the staff member, you have to write down all the steps. That way, if that staff member quits or you got to fire them or gets hit by a bus, you bring in someone new, you hand them the SOP and they hit the ground running. It takes care of a lot of training. But that means initially before you outsource, you are the one writing all these goddamn procedures. And I did that myself. I remember spending a lot of time writing out how to check my email, how to respond to certain emails. Well, some emails are this, you gotta respond this way. Some emails are that, you gotta respond this way. I remember writing out these long, pages long descriptions, steps on how to make a blog post. How to, because what I used to do was I'd write the blog article, then I would just hand it off to my staff. Someone would proofread it, then someone else would post it, then someone else would find the image, then someone else would configure it on the WordPress. And there were steps for all this stuff. And I had to write out all these steps. It was pages and pages of steps. And I fucking hated it. Was it worth it? A oh, fuck yeah. It was worth it. So yes, you have to write this stuff out. You have to train them, suck it up and do it. It's a one-time thing. Next thing is, well, what if they do it wrong? Caleb, are gonna do it wrong. Yes, they're gonna do it wrong sometimes. If your staff was as good as you, they would make the money that you're making. So yes, they're not going to be as good as you, but they might be 80% as good, 70% as good. That's fine in most cases. Now, often your staff is going to be better at what you are doing. So I have an IT background, but my tech guys, when they work on my websites, with some exceptions, are usually better than me, way better than me, way better than me. So they do a better job than me. My customer service staff, I can tell you for a fact, does a much better job at handling my customers than I do because they're better at it. So sometimes they'll do a better job, but yes, they will make mistakes. That's part of running a business. A real business means you have a staff, no employees now. Remember, Alpha 2.0 companies do not have salaried employees, no employees. These are all contractors, volunteers, interns, what have you, people you find on Upwork and places like that. But you have a staff. A real company means you have a staff of people doing things. And yes, they're going to make mistakes. When they make mistakes, they will have to correct them. You'll have to call them out and correct them. If they make mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake, guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to fucking fire them. And yes, you're going to have to fire people. I've had to fire people. It's, again, part of doing business. Well, I don't want to fire someone because then I'll have to hire someone again and go through it again. All right, I've talked about the rule of three. Rule of three states, when you hire someone... You assume that person is incompetent. You assume that person is terrible. I don't care if you interview a million people and you find the best one. You assume when you hire that person, that person is terrible and you have to fire that person. I always do this when I hire a new staff member. Or actually, I don't hire my staff people anymore, but you get my point. Whenever I have to hire an advisor, a coach, an attorney, a bookkeeper, anyone external, I assume that person is going to suck. And I'm going to have to fire that person and get another one. And then you know what? I assume the second person is going to suck. And I have to fire that fucking person. And then finally, the third person will be the good one. It's called the rule of three. I always follow this. The good news is usually you don't have to go three deep to find the right person. Sometimes you can find the right person the first time. Sometimes it's the second person. And in rare events, it's the third person. But when it's the first person or second person, you're happy and you're surprised. You're like, oh, this is great. Instead of what most people do is they hire someone and they say, thank God, I finally hired someone. I never have to go through this ever again. Thank God I've hired this person who will now take care of me for the rest of my life. Then they got to fire that person six months later and they're all furious and pissed off because they didn't follow the rule of three. Follow the rule of three. Caleb, this sounds like a lot of hassle. Initially, it's a lot of hassle. Eventually, you can do what I did and hire someone to manage your staff for you so they can fire people and they can hire people, right? So you can outsource your staff. I did that. You can outsource everything, and you should. Initially, is it a pain in the ass? Yes. Do you want the big money on low hours per week or not? I've said this before. I could maintain my entire income and work 15, one, five hours per week. I could do it. It would be difficult. It'd be weird, but I could do it. Okay. Now, that wouldn't be possible if this was all by myself. If I was the typical small entrepreneur and said, I can't outsource anything, or I can't outsource, I can outsource these two or three things, but these four or five things, no, no, I can never outsource them. I have to do them myself because only I can do them. Well, that's the way it goes. Do you want to be right or do you want to get paid? If you want the big money, and I know a lot of you do, some of you don't, and that's okay. Like I said, I am not Grant Cardone. If you want to make 75,000 a year the rest of your life, I'm cool with that. It better be at least 75,000 a year. If you want to make 42,000 a year the rest of your life, uh, you're fucked. You need to make at least $75,000 a year. I've talked about why many times. So, but I'm not Grant Cardone or Tony Robbins or Jay Abrahams. You got to make millions of dollars. Some people don't want to make that kind of money and that's fine. I do, but if you don't, that's fine. But you guys who do, that's who this podcast is for. You guys, and there's a lot of you in my audience who want the big money, the big money, the good money. If you are currently nervous 
about outsourcing certain functions in your business, you have to get over it. You have to sack up, you gotta man up, you gotta grit your fucking teeth and just fucking do it. Force yourself to go through the pain, the emotional pain now, it's mostly emotional, the emotional pain and discomfort of outsourcing something that you think is just sacrosanct and that only you can do it and just fucking power through it Work with that person as best you can. Train that person as best you can. Write up all the SOPs you can. You will have to do this. Assume that person is not gonna be the final person. Follow the rule of three and just get it done. It's worth it. Believe me, it's worth it. I have a very high income that is completely location independent where I don't have to work long hours. I do work long hours because I choose to, but I don't have to. That would not be possible if I had the attitude most small entrepreneurs did of, well, these two, three, four, five things I can never outsource. I can never, ever do it because, <laughs> because I'm special and unique. And yeah, no, I would never, ever have that lifestyle if that was my attitude. Now, does that mean you outsource literally everything? No. If you have a Model A business like I do with my Alpha 2.0 company, there are certain things that you don't need to outsource. One or two things, not four or five, one or two. But even those things you could outsource. At some point in my Alpha 2.0 company over the next few years, I will hire guys to create content for me. I will hire guys to create business content for me, to create dating content for me. They'll do it under the Alpha 2.0 banner. You'll still see my face on the website. But even content that I create, I will eventually outsource. See, because I don't have this problem. I don't have this emotional hang up of I can't outsource anything or I can't outsource these four or five things because I like the big money. That's what I like. The choice is yours. You have to make this decision. If you want the big money, how badly do you want it? Do you want the big money or do you want this emotional comfort to know that you're doing it all yourself and you're doing it perfectly and no one else can? It's basically like a little emotional blankie that you have to cling to so you don't feel bad. Do you want your little fucking blankie or do you want the big, big money? Because you can't have both. You got to pick one. If you want that blankie, boy, I hope you love that blankie. I hope that's the best blankie on earth. I, be, I hope that blankie, you know, jerks you off at night. I hope that blankie feeds you. I hope that's the best, most wonderful blankie in the world because you're giving up a big amount of money and a great amount of lifestyle for that blankie. Think hard on this. Outsource. You must outsource if you want the big money on low hours. I have much more to say about this. And I'll probably cover some other stuff like this in future podcasts. But for now, I'll leave you with that. I will see you very soon. Bye.